All right, since it's being recorded, I won't use your student names at all, okay? So um, I want you guys to understand the quiz you took on Friday is the main content that you would see on module one of the exam. So everything we do this week will be what you would see on module two of the exam. Module two is more of making predictions using box and whisker plots, probability, making equations. So it's not just graphing and using y equals mx plus b. It kind of hits all those other topics. We're going to deal with shading in this one. Um, so to start with, though, I wanted to keep going on the GCS and the LCMs. How do we do LCM of these two items? Remember, there is a 1. It is 12. Yeah, because the multiples of 12 are 12, 24, 36, etc. And then there's just a 1 there. Multiples are 1, 2, 3, 4. So the first time that would overlap is out of 12. Now, do you guys remember X6 or X4? X6. And Y, well, Y or Y? Yeah. Let's do the GCF then. What goes into both of those items? 1 and X4 or X6? And Y1 or Y1? Yeah. The K zones won't have the 1 there. All right. <clears throat> now, this one. Um, this one takes you back to what you did before in a separate class. I really debated on how to present this to you. So here's what we're going to do. This is a list of numbers that has a pattern. Okay. I want you to call this place one, place two, place three, and place four. <coughs> All right. I'm going to move at this pace. So get yourselves focused so I can move on. Okay. So the first thing you're right, the, the slope is 2.2, but I need you to do it like this. And you could even, if you wanted to, you guys could do like slope is 2.2. That is absolutely true. Do you guys see the slope of being 2.2? Yeah. Okay. It's increasing 2.2. Now I'm going to guide you through three main steps. They're saying, what is the 50th number in the pattern? Let's say you guys have no idea how to make this equation. You could just write this list out 50 times. Do you see it up there on the board? You could just write it out 50 times. Get the right answer that way. All right. Now, if you by chance, if you're sitting there and you're taking 2.2 and multiplying it by 50 and adding it to like 7.2, you are wrong. So please don't do that. Here's the technical way to do it. Step one, you found the slope, which you already found. Let's say that you have no idea how to find the slope. Okay. You set your slope up like this. You do 9.4. What do you guys think? 9.4 take away. Nope, 7.2. And then what else? What do you think? Since 9.4 is at spot two, you would do two take away. What do you guys think there? One. And that would be 2.2 over one, which proves the 2.2 you found at the beginning. Now, if you found the 2.2, you can skip the work of number step number one. Step number two. You will have a formula sheet, and this formula will be on there. Who can use this and fill in that formula? Who can use this and fill in that formula? What will that be? Y minus good equals good times X minus good. And then we can get that in y equals mx plus b by distributing. So y minus 7.2, who can distribute? What would that be if you distribute? Yeah. Good. And if I just do a quick copy and paste, or actually, what if I just shrink this down? Because there's only one step left here. How do you guys get Y by itself? Yes, good. And what will the equation be? Y equals finish it. I started at two plus what's that make? Good. Now that's your equation. Now the problem, step three, <clears throat> asked about the 50th spot. 
Does anybody know how to do that? Like 50 and for X, good. Grab a calculator. You can type this in one step in your calculator. Good. I messed up. I'll do how you do it. Okay. Um, now that seemed long and complicated. It was good that you guys found 2.2. Uh, let's say you forget all of that. What is 2 point? Just like thinking, what is 2.2 times 50? Just in general. What is it? 110. If we were to add that to the first number, we would get 117.2. I'm going to guess that would be a multiple choice option, which is kind of stinky because it seems very tempting. But just um, if you choose to do that, just take off like the slope of 2.2 and that will get you to your answer of 115. Just be careful not to fall for that trick on that one. I would say that's definitely, I, I wouldn't know why they wouldn't have one of those. I've seen it on every practice test. So I thought that'd be pretty important to have on there. Okay, domain of the following, domain of the ordered pairs of the relation. Who knows the domain over there? Mm-hmm. And how do we do them? What should we write first? Those are braces. What should be the first X we write? Good. Yep. Yeah. Three, four, and that's it. Notice uh, she did not repeat the three and the four, even though they happened more than once. That's your domain, your X values. Least to greatest, no repeats. All right, number four. For a local race, the prize for first place is $450 plus an additional $3 for every person who registered for the race. Fill in the equation shown below that represents the prize, Y, in dollars, for the first place based on the number of people X who register for the race. Who can fill in the number in front of X and then the number in the back? Three is one in front of X, yeah. Okay. So this is the number. Uh, what word is by three that, I, that tells you it's your slope? What do you guys see? What word? What is a key word? No? It is every. Isn't that the same kind as the word per or the word each? That tells you that three is your slope. If you see every or each or per, that's your slope. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the first one. Will the, first pri will the prize for first place always be a multiple of 30? The first, what is a multiple of 30? Tell me an answer. What is good? 30, 60, 90, 120, et cetera. Well, what do you guys think? Will, will it always give you a multiple of 30? Can anybody think of an instance when it won't give you a multiple of 30? What should we plug in? Do we plug in 10? Okay, so let's do y equals 3 times 10 plus 450. 3 times 10 is 30. 30 plus 450 is 3 times 10 is 30. It is 480. Is that a multiple of 30? Does anybody know? 480 divided by 30. Is that a multiple of 30? Okay, so let's write yes here. Let's plug in something else just to see if we can trick the system. What else should we plug in? Plug in some like weird number. Eight, okay. Can you guys do that? That's 24 plus 450. 24 plus 450, how much does that make? 474. Is that a multiple of 30? What's that? No. So it says, will it always be a multiple of 30? What do we write? No. So the when I was going through this, I'm like, well, how do I teach them? It's like, what would be the best thing I could teach them? Um, what I did is I just like thought of different numbers to see if it's true all the time or false. Okay, next one. So do you guys remember the multiple choice you told me kind of threw you off, like it was worded weird in some places? What I did is instead of just having you solve this, I took the multiple choice and I made questions out of them. So the second multiple choice was a statement and you had to see if it was true or false. So I just made it a question. Will the prize for first place be $660 if 75 people register for the race? How do I do that? Hmm. No? 
it's always this equation. Yeah, what's for your x? What did x represent? Should I zoom out? What did x represent? What did x represent? Use your reading skills. What did x represent? Number of people, yep, yep, yep. So what goes in for x then? Number of people, okay. Let's solve that. What is three times 75, anybody? I think it's 225, but you might wanna check me. 225 plus 450, guys. 675. So did we get 660? Okay, so we'll just write no. So that is not a true statement. So I plugged in people, I got out money, the money did not match, so that's a no. So it must mean that this one would probably be your true statement. Let's see if this is a true statement. Notice multiple, how many multiple choice are there usually? How many multiple choice are there usually? Four. I only had room to fit three of them. So that's why there's only three here. Okay. Is the prize for first place when there are 170 people registered twice as much as when there are 10 people registered? Holy cow, how do we do this? How do we do this? Remington, you have any idea? Anybody? Anybody? No. Okay, so they're saying, hey, let's say that there's a, maybe you guys don't understand the problem. Maybe we didn't talk about the problem well enough. That's good, all right, let's, let's go ahead and improve those reading skills. What's the problem about? <laughs> let's start there, what is the problem about? You don't know what you're reading. You're already sunk. Yeah. What's the problem about? A race. And what's happening at this race? You're getting a prize. Okay. What is the prize? Kind of. So it's money, right? It's 450, but it grows. It's not just 450. What else is it? So make a statement out of that. Like, how is your price changing? Perfect, that's an excellent statement. The more competitors, the better the price, the more money you get. So let's say that there's 170 people racing, how much money would you get? Let's say there's 10 people racing, how much money would you get? Can you guys do those statements? How did you, what's that? For which one? Thank you so much. I'm going to run with that because I know that was the answer. I just did this last night. So you said, um, tell me what you typed in your calculator for 170 people. Good. And you got 960 over here. Good. So, yep, used your equation. What about 10 people? Who can like mimic what he just did for 10 people? How much is it? I'm sorry. Okay. So 10 plus 450, 480, you said? All right. So do you guys think this is a, is this true or not? Is this a yes, this is true or no, this is false? Because they wanted to know, is it twice as much? It is. This is a yes. 960 is twice of 480. In other words, it's double. So this is a true statement. So they are testing a few things here. They're testing, can you read a problem? <laughs> right? That's the thing. Slow down, reread. Lily's taking her PSSAs today in third grade. It's her math ones today. I told her, same thing I'm going to tell you. Read every question twice. Get an answer. When you're done, read the question twice and make sure that your answer matches what they're actually looking for. So it might, she might be one of the slower ones to take her test, but she's going to do great. She's going to do wonderful. All right. Number five. 
I started easy. It might not feel like it on number five, but we'll increase the level of difficulty of this one on Wednesday. Let's see if you guys know how to do it. And then let's see if you know how I'm going to change the difficulty of it on Wednesday. The equation 4x plus y equals 7 describes a function of x. That just means it passes a vertical line test. What graph represents the function? Now, this was multiple choice. There were four graphs. You had to pick the right one. What's that? You have to move the 4x. How do you move the 4x? Drag your 4x. So our goal, let's test your vocabulary. Our goal was to get it in what form? What form is that? Slope, what's the other word? Intercept form. That is your goal. How might I make this dif more difficult for you on Wednesday? I'm going to add like, yeah, maybe a three here in front of the Y. And so you'll have another step you'll have to divide. But I wouldn't start it easy. But it's been a hot minute since you've gotten Y by itself. All right, now let's graph this. The keystones for the wrong answer. What do you guys think they might do wrong? Yeah, that's seven. Where do we, yes, they might go to negative seven. Where do we know that seven goes? On the X or Y axis? On the Y axis. So right here, that green dot. Um, they might put it, I'll just circle it up. They could potentially put it here. That is a common mistake. I'm putting it on the X axis. So there will probably be a choice where that happens. When I make my multiple choice, that's what I would do to mess up with it. How about your slope of negative one, four? How do we, or negative four? How do we actually do that? Good. What are some things that kids might do wrong? Yep, they might do up four. They might change, yeah. They might, they might do run over rise. So they might run four and then increase one. So they might get their rise over run mixed up. They could, yes, because they sometimes I think the negative goes to both of them. That's absolutely true. One, two, three, four. But this is something we talk about so that when you do it, hopefully you have that memory. Like, okay, I know it's not a double negative. I know it's, you know, my Y's and then my X's. So you'll pick the graph that looks something like this. This might not be the perfect representation, but they'll have all kinds of things. So I'll just put a wrong one in red. They could absolutely do one, two, three. This would be a wrong one, this red one. That's like when they switch the slope. That could be something you see. So just be careful not to mess with your slope. Okay. Oh, guys. Now... You guys, I just take a practice test and change the words. Like number six wasn't about Bob. Number six was about Riley. Okay. And Riley wasn't putting in drainage, free yards. Riley was painting. So I'm just taking their questions and changing them. So if you're thinking, holy crap, she has a lot of word problems. Well, I guess now you know what to expect on 17th. All right. Bob puts in, oh, and again, everything has to do with my life. So we really do need drainage put in our yard so this was up this was a they quoted us anybody like to take a guess how much the drainage in our yard was going to cost us anybody want to take a guess what our quote was thirty eight hundred dollars yeah that's okay i don't think we're going to do it <laughs> we might have to wait till next year okay bob puts drainage in the four different yards he charges his customers a fixed amount to cover the expenses of the tiller do you guys know what a tiller is it grinds up the yard to like put the, the pipes in um, and buying the pipes. He also charges an amount based on how many hours he's going to work. The equation below represents the total amount Y in dollars that Bob's going to charge his customers for the job that needs done. Is that daydreaming? Let's get back in. What do you guys think the 25 would represent? Yeah, kind of. Not, it's not just ours because what's that? That is incorrect. That's what X represents. X represents the hours. No, it's, what does 25 represent? The 25, we don't know if he works 25 hours. What could that mean? Nope, that's the basic fee in the back. That's the 700. 
I think you might say it, Meg. Maybe you didn't. There, so it is. It's a price per hour. I think you said hours, how many hours he works. You said that second. Okay, so that is the fact that he charges $25 per hour. Remember, X represented hour. So whatever is in front of X is the per hour. Okay, he's at 20, like 25 cats or 25 hours per hour. Okay, it's $25 per hour. <clears throat> what is the equation of the line that passes through 2, 7, and 3, negative 3, and negative 18? Hint, make sure you use your formulas from the formula sheet on the keystones. Do you guys want to see the formulas? What formulas would you use on this one? Let's see if you guys can get them. What formula is that? That's right. That is step one. What's that? You were saying negative 18 minus 7? Nope. So what is that? What formula is that? We're not done yet. Let's get them. Let's get the formulas. Let's see if I can find them. Yeah, it's a slope formula. Yeah, it's a slope formula. That's all I needed. That was perfect. So I'm going to write M equals... Now that's the numerator. What's the denominator? What? Negative three minus two. Okay. Simplify the numerator. What's that give you? Use your calculator. Please use it now so you're more familiar with it come keystone time. What is it? Negative 25 is correct. What is the denominator? And what buttons help us to reduce this if we're unclear? And what would your calculator give you on that? What's that? Five. All right, now I'll pull up you guys, unless anybody has a hint, you, we've already used the formula once today. Good, so step two. Why might, do you guys remember that um, the quiz we took pretty recently on the word problems? It was like, how many long, and then I had you make a statement after you solved all of it. You had a few of these. I was like, did I give you two points or did I give you an M and a B? Who can fill that in using either point? I would personally, what do you guys think I would recommend using? I would use the ones that don't have any negatives because you have the less of a chance of screwing it up. All right, so we're gonna pick two seven. I'm just gonna write that right here that we are picking two comma seven. So what should I put? Good. And what should we do next with that? So five X minus 10, good. So this was the fill in, then we distributed. Now what should we do? And that's the additive property of equality. If they ever ask about that, the properties will be listed on the formula sheet. I need to print formula sheets and tape them to your desks. I feel like that would be a good thing to have. And there's your equation. That's it. They ask you to graph it, you graph it, you're good to go. Um, do you guys want to learn how to use your calculator to do these or not? Your calculator will do all of that for you and give you the equation. Are you interested in learning or not? I don't sense any interest, so we'll move on. A line is graphed on the coordinate plane shown below. Well, actually to the left. I had to edit it a little bit there. What is the slope and what is the y-intercept? Y-intercept is uh, zero, negative three. What's the slope? Four over five. You're a thief. All right. Um, here's what I'm hearing. Thank you. I'm hearing four over five. And do we now I'm not I'm guessing you did the same way I did. I went from my y intercept to like the next like clear cut point. Okay. I'm gonna show you that here. Here's your y intercept. 
one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That was the next place it actually crossed. So you identifying those is pretty important, pretty crucial. Is so everybody okay with that? Are we happy with positive? Should it be negative? It's positive. All right. Let's see how you guys doing this one. A system is shown below. I'm going to color coat mine. What well, two colors? You guys like me to use like brown, don't you? Red and brown. Is that what? Green. Uh oh, now I don't know what to pick. Blue and red. What? Red. Red and purple. Those are too close. This is fun. This is the this is the most interactive you've been all day. With this time for colors. <laughs> I'm going to hit red because I think everybody at least said red, and then I don't know what else to do. We'll just start with red. Okay, what might I do on Wednesday to this one to make it more difficult, to challenge you more? What might I do on Wednesday? What was that? I'll put more numbers. I won't have it in Y equals MX plus B for you. You'll have to work for it a little bit. Okay, um, tell me how to graph that one. Okay. So I'll do that on the y-axis, and then what will I do with 3 over 2? Okay, there's more. No, I'm not even at the graph yet. Tell me a little bit more. What else will I need to do? Okay. Yep. That's what I needed. Yep, I said, this is a what? Give me a vocab word. This is not an equation. This is an inequality. Very good. So, so one, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two. And you said solid because it, why was it solid? Right. And you told me to shade above. Can you guys tell me where above is though? Sometimes, yeah. So here, option one or option two. Uh, actually, you do the y-axis, so you do the higher the higher line. In this case, it is the negative x-axis, but yeah, the positive y-axis is what we're going to do. Oh, good enough there. I'm happy with it. Kind of. Okay, I'm going to call that good. I'm going to pick brown because there was no, I don't think anybody agreed on the color. Next one. Tell me about this right here. What do I do with this one? Yep, how do I move the 2x? Minus 2x. Am I moving too fast? Did I shade too quickly? Are you keeping up okay? <clears throat> what sign is that? What sign is that? Greater than? What should, should I make this negative 4 or should I keep them separate? Now tell me a little bit. There's four things I need to hear before I move to the graph. What should I do first? Tell me about the y-axis. Where do I go on the y-axis? Tell me what I do for my slope. Tell me about my shading. What does that mean? Shade up or shade down? Now tell me about my line, solid or broken. This one's broken because it's not equal to. Let's go do all those things. Should I be concerned that it did not mean meet at a specific point? What's the answer to these ones? Does anybody remember? Where the shading meets, that's right. It's not always where the points meet. When do I care about the points meeting? What are those called? Uh, not necessarily when they're equations. Equations, we care about where they meet. Inequality, we care where the shading meets. Was that too big of a statement or did you understand that, guys? That was too big of a statement? Equations are where the points meet. Inequalities are where the shading meets. And you guys told me to shade up. Look, I'm going to ask you option A or option B. Option B is higher than the other brown line, so here. Should 
Sure. We only have one more problem. Can you wait? Thanks. I'll go. I'll go fast through it. Well, you guys should go through after because we already did a few times. It was the weakest part on the quiz, though. So I was like, oh, I better do that again. Yeah, not a lot of people did on the quiz, so I yeah, better do it again. The next one. Hey, wait. Look at this uh, graph, and I need you guys to understand the keystones might not have that. They might have one. It's just this part only. That's where the answers are. Do you understand? I only heard that from the from half the room. Do you guys understand? It, they might not have. Do you hear me? They might not have the. They might not have this, and they might not have this. It's just the double shaded. All right. Hey students, is this a solution? Yes or no? Yep. What about this one? Is the uh, let's do one two. I don't know where I was. It's one two. What about this? Is this one a solution? Is this one a solution? No, because they're on the broken line. Solid line, yes. Broken line, no. Oh, these ones did not go well on the quiz on Friday, so I think it would behoove us to talk about how to do this. Not everybody at once. Mm -hmm. That's fine. <laughs> I appreciate I appreciate you doing that much. Mm hmm. Yeah. That one was very missed on the quiz. Ah, I got you. And you're like, that's not good. <laughs> and don't forget the multiple choice. You could always put your multiple choice answers in for X and one of them has to work. So I think too what happens with these things is like even if you forget all the ins and outs of everything I teach you, the multiple the answer is in the multiple choice. So if you sit there long enough and like plug the numbers in, you can get it. It's just a matter of like having a desire <laughs> to try. I'm like I can't build that in for you. So, I mean, whatever I can do, I will. I, I, I can say, oh, you can't graduate high school until you pass this, which is semi-true. I mean, you have to take it when you're a freshman, take it when you're a sophomore, take it when you're a junior, and then your senior year, if you haven't passed, you have to make a portfolio. But, I mean, I don't like the stupid for me to sit here and threaten you. Just try your best. Just get it over with. Just two days of, we won't have class together. Okay, so whatever that means to you. All right, I'm gonna open up the homework for you. Use that as a guide, it goes hand in hand. Yeah, thanks for waiting. All right, it's in there. You guys have 45 minutes to work on it. <laughs> 